Welcome to SFO. This is Steve. This episode, Nick Lang goes to bed in the morning and comes out at midnight. Ravi makes you wonder if they should give the old Axl Rose treatment to the promise ring. But first, Katrina Ford celebrates gleaming the cube. Gleaming the Cube is the name of a movie that starred Christian Slater as a teen skateboarder who unravels an international murder conspiracy. Uh, the title is goofy because it doesn't really have any meaning. No one gleams cubes. The movie's title was lifted, it's believed, from like a 1983 article in the magazine Thrasher, which is for skateboarding, where some guys were kind of just throwing out, you know, corny SoCal valleyisms as if Pauly Shore was spitballing catchphrases like wheezing the juice, gleaming the cube. So even though the filmmakers thought they were using real skateboarder speak in their movie, it actually turned out to become symbolic for when adults just don't get youth culture. Katrina Ford, in her notes for the song on Bandcamp, doesn't explain it either. Check out the song. <laughs> Starting the song with a simple piano melody and hand claps, Katrina Ford layers and swaps out loops within Gleaming the Cube until the song is about to burst. It's a lesson in pop architecture, competing bass lines, wow. Um, it's also filled with some mischief as Ford takes an eternity, spilling out the lyrics. <laughs> the first four lines span from the third second to the 70th. And they're kind of drawn out like the way a school teacher might torture her class as someone in a limo pulls up to be a guest speaker. While you ponder throwing things out of exasperation, Ford continues to sort of ride the break and break lyrical conventions despite being in the midst of kind of a rapture of a song. Uh, Ford is was in the band Celebration, which was also an early friend to TV on the radio. I think she's on Staring at the Sun and maybe Wolf Like Me. She adds vocals. Gleaming the Cube is the sixth and final song on her self-titled EP that was released by Violin Films Records this past June. Uh, her video for the song I'm Found was just released in July on YouTube. And links are below. Come on, kidding me? On Labor Day afternoon, I was outside doing some yard work, kind of crouching under some bushes, and uh, I live on a street, I live on a corner actually, but on one of the streets there is no sidewalk, so all the foot traffic is usually on the opposite side of the street, all the baby strollers, all the dog walkers, but I was, uh, you know, sitting there pulling weeds, and I hear music coming up the street. Now, neighborhood kids have taken to attaching Bluetooth speakers to their bikes, and it's also not uncommon for them to half-pedal really slowly while they look at TikTok. So I figured maybe there's a bicycle coming down my side of the street. Getting closer and closer, I can tell it's a woman's voice singing a cappella, and it's Tainted Love by Soft Cell. Turns out to be a middle-aged woman walking and wearing AirPods. Remember, she can't see me. I'm, you know, digging with my little shovel, pulling weeds out. As far as she's concerned, she's alone, and she's building toward the chorus. I give you all the boy could give you. Take my tears, and that's not nearly all. I jump out of the bushes, scare the air out of her. Eyes go back, body hits the ground. Now, I see there's a car coming, so I've got to grab her by the arm and drag her over the curb. And as this is happening, my wife comes out of the house. I'm holding some limp body's arm while a shovel in my gloved hand. It looks pretty grim. It's also pretty made up. This didn't really happen because I'm not a psychopath. Anyway, on the seventh chord happy morning midnight, Nick Lang comes off like a wounded romantic who doesn't know his game is lost. He doesn't know to quit. He is John Favreau versus the answering machine in Swingers. Check it out. Sit up, shut up. Don't clap when you give up. You know. Pigeoning his chin. 
to an unassailable but stripped groove and walking along an invisible tightrope. The lethal words from a lover who's attempting to dump him are just clanging off his helmet like bullets and he's ignoring all cries to just get the hell down. Instead, he twists his vibrato into jazzy little curly cues, kind of singing in a Jack White sass while somewhat concealing a potentially Jeff Buckley-sized wail. Only the frequent but unscheduled intrusions of discord let us know that not all is right with our hero's nonchalance. Nick Lang's video is worth checking out as well. It's continuously shot, but in a way, I read this and I like this, uh, like a Russian doll of continuous shooting, if that makes any sense. You'll have to see it. Uh, Lang, who's South African, toured the United States in our spring, and now that it's springtime in South Africa, I imagine he's going to start gearing up for a summer tour there. Um, his album Spirals came out on Soda Records in July. Otherwise, the links are below. Did you For a while in my past, the test of a truly good song was how it would sound if Axl Rose sang it. And it was called Yellow. If you don't want to see me, get up with somebody. A friend of mine, she says she has less time for songs that are not performed by their writers. Um, I don't totally agree with that. I feel like a song might need time locating itself through different vocalists and Axel is there to guide them. I say this because I hear Lazy Susan, and I ponder what it would sound like if Ravi were to attempt the Promise Ring catalog. I don't say this to be flippant. I love the Promise Ring. For us, hearing Why Did We Ever Meet, it was like being beckoned off the couch to the opening notes of I Want You Back from the Jackson 5. It was like being Poindexter brought off the couch during Revenge of the Nerds to Thriller, like the zombies coming out of the sewers, or like the corpses coming out from behind their tables to dance to the time of their lives in Dirty Dancing. Given its lack of power pop pacing, Lazy Susan would probably fit better on either the first or the last Promise Ring record. Check it out. from what I can tell is an unconventional guitar tuning and Robbie has Davy Von Bullen's sort of phrasing although she doesn't crack her voice as much and she can hit those high notes sorry Davy uh, the lyrical construct doesn't have a typical A B A B scheme but it's almost like it's daydreaming not in a detached way but sort of shy and earnest when Lazy Susan picks up momentum Robbie and her band are able to meet it and they also, you know, kind of sort of change directions a couple of times. As a bonus, the more the song grows, the more layered the vocal harmonies become. And I don't know, I say give it a go. Ravi x TPR, I'll sing like Axel until it happens. If what I'm saying has very little meaning to you at all because you don't know who the promise ring are, knowing the promise ring isn't fundamental to liking Lazy Susan, Ravi make very charming indie pop. And if you like that, you will like it. Thank you for stopping by. Click like, subscribe, leave some comments. Um, check out the newer reviews I have posted on Instagram. I also somewhat promo those reviews with shorts on YouTube and, oh yes, I'm on TikTok, baby. Anyway, links are all below. See ya. Is this anyone? Is this yours? Huh? Huh?